So uh, a little bit of uh, anatomy that we should be familiar with. Trigeminal neuralgia, is, as we all know, it's, it's the word tri or the <clears throat> prefix tri is because there are three major portions um, that we think about V1, V2, and V3. And it's good to have an imprint in your mind of generally where V1, V2, and V3 are. Uh, the uh, major landmarks, you know, the nose and eyes are in V1. From below the eye to the top of the lip is V2. And then the mandibular branch of V3 is the easiest one to uh, pay attention to. But it's also important to know, especially as we talk about other types of facial pain, uh, the greater occipital nerve and less occipital nerves, which cover the back of the head, and you can have occipital neuralgia, which can also be a pain radiating now from the back of the head to the top of the head, and sometimes all the way up to the eyes, and then uh, other nerve distributions here. I think it's also important to know that uh, you know within uh, the different branches of the trigeminal nerve, uh, sorry, within the different divisions of the trigeminal nerve, there are individual branches, and sometimes those become relevant. And the very last technique that I'm going to speak to you about really does uh, require that you know some of these branches. And uh, I won't go into detail about the surgical procedures, uh, but it'll be important to have a general idea. So trigeminal neuralgia. Um, this is uh, a classification that has uh, mostly come from uh, Dr. Birchall uh, at Oregon Health Sciences. But I think there's some key factors here. Uh, which is that the pain should be in the trigeminal nerve distribution, so V1, V2, or V3. Uh, they are proxismal attacks, so intermittent attacks that can last seconds up to minutes. Uh, and it should be an intense or sharp stabbing pain, and it should be precipitated by a trigger. And the trigger can be anything from uh, touching the face to winds to eating, chewing, drinking, um, sometimes just positional changes. Uh, and they are very stereotyped. So when someone comes in and says the pattern is different every time, it makes you think that it might not be trigeminal neuralgia. The biggest difference between type one and type two is that with type one, the majority of the time there is pain-free intervening episodes. So you can ask a patient with trigeminal neuralgia type one, and they'll say that most of the time they don't have pain, but when the pain comes, it's a deadly pain. Trigeminal neuralgia type two, on the other hand, there's a persistent pain underlying it where they have pain more than 50% of the time. And secondary trigeminal neuralgia is when it's caused by another structural lesion. So again, going into the history that's relevant, uh, I have a, a, almost a checklist in my mind as I speak to patients. I really wanna know the location. So I ask them where the pain is. This is they'll just point to their entire face and I'll say, no, 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 no. I need you to tell me exactly where your pain is uh, because I wanna understand your pain. The next part is very hard to elicit. Um, and the harder it is to elicit, the less likely it probably is to be trigeminal neuralgia, but the quality of the pain. Uh, I'm looking for them to call it stabbing or electrical or stunning or something where it sounds like a, a shock, something that is you know, just coming out of nowhere and just grasps them from, uh, out of, uh, from a pain-free episode. It's in contrast to a burning, gnawing, chronic aching pain. That's not the type of pain I want to hear about with trigeminal neuralgia. Now, to be honest, in type two, you can have both. You can have that chronic burning, gnawing pain underlying it with this overlying stabbing electrical trigger type pain. So again, the timing and triggers become an important factor, which is, uh, you know, we want to have those intermittent pain-free episodes. Now, something that um, I haven't really seen in a textbook, but it's a rule that I use, um, which I find to be a good differentiator of trigeminal neuralgia from other types of facial pain, which is whether the patients are afraid of their pain. And what I mean by that is, do they feel like it can attack them out of nowhere and cripple them? Is it, are they afraid to eat? Are they afraid to even move because the pain is suddenly gonna grip them? Or is it a more chronic pain that's just always there and it just ruins their life? The patients who say they're afraid of their pain in my experience, have, are more likely to have trigeminal neuralgia because it sort of signifies that stabbing, electrical, shocking, intermittent, triggered type pain. So for me, if someone says they're not afraid of their pain, they just are devastated by it, that's uh, a red flag. Now, speaking of red flags, 
uh, we not only want to know about the distribution of the pain, the pattern of the pain, the triggers, whether they're afraid of it, but we want to know about other symptoms that may make us think about other types of facial pain. In particular, I always document whether patients have autonomic symptoms. And in particular, I talk about watering eye, whether they have conjunctival uh, injections or redness of the eye, tearing of the eye, runny nose, swelling of the face, discoloration of the face associated with the pain. A lot of people say, yes, I cry when I have the pain, but I say, no, 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 no. I'm not asking if you're crying out of pain, but do you get these symptoms when you have the pain? And if you do, or if the patient has that, it should be a red flag that we're not treating trigeminal neuralgia or any variant of trigeminal neuralgia. It's actually an autonomic cephalalgia, the most popular of which is cluster headache. And cluster headache, if you haven't seen it, can be very similar to trigeminal neuralgia. So you really want to differentiate it. And the response, uh, the treatment is going to be very different for cluster headache versus, or any autonomic cephalalgia versus uh, trigeminal neuralgia. So it's important to get that. Seasonal variations, again, this is the classic definition of what a cluster headache is, that it clusters at a certain time of year that you get a lot of attacks, you have pain-free weeks or months at a time. Um, and then any other visual or neuro uh, neurological phenomenon, uh, which may indicate a migranous type of pain rather than a trigeminal neuralgia type pain. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.